Sünder sein und dann wird den Juden das breche Lügenmaul gestoppt werden. We should go and burn all the copies of their Talmud. But he was infuriated about the Talmud. Of course, today, the Jews consider him a great anti-Semite. Now we're going to watch as Stephen Anderson actually quotes from Catholic church fathers to prove his point that the Jews are, that Christians, you know, these leaders, church leaders have always been against the Jews. You know, doesn't matter what the Bible says. He can't handle scripture, so he has to go like the Catholics do. Whenever they can't handle scripture, they'll go to with the church fathers or church tradition. That's what these people do. But let's watch this. What is replacement theology? Replacement theology is the root and branch of Christian anti-Semitism. It's like a virus in the church. Basically is saying that the church now has superseded Israel and this theology that discards the place of the Jewish people and replaces it with the church, the new and true spiritual Israel, is very dangerous because I believe it's the primary root of anti-Semitism. Many theologians all through the centuries have preached replacement theology. Can you name some that, that have preached that? I have here everything about uh, John Chrysostom, and uh, the, 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 he is the chief anti-Semite of the church. The synagogue is worse than a whorehouse. It is the den of scoundrels and the repair of wild beasts. The temple of demons devoted to idolatrous cults the refuge of debauchees and the cavern of devils. It is a criminal assembly of Jews, a place of meeting for the assassins of Christ, a den of thieves, a dwelling of iniquity, the refuge of devils, a gulf and an abyss of perdition. I would say the same thing about their souls okay so they, they they purposefully record a voice obviously it's not John Chrysostom been dead quite a few centuries there but uh, they re purposefully record a voice all militant and hateful and uh, everything and they don't say hey now this is going too far and whatever else they don't do that this is pr being promoted in other words out there okay let's keep watching here they have demonized the Jews. This is still present in the mind of many. Throughout history, Christians have not looked at the Jews as God's chosen people. They looked at them as a people that rejected Christ and were therefore rejected by God. Okay. Uh, for centuries, Christians have rejected the Jews. You know, they've just rejected the Jews. Do you realize he just called this Chrysostom a Christian? Now we're going to see who else he calls a Christian here, and now I'm going to actually show you that he lies and contradicts himself from older sermons that he's preached. For example, the last book written by Martin Luther before he died was called The Jews and Their Lies. And in this book, he gives all kinds of scriptural arguments for why the Jews are not God's chosen people, and he also exposes a lot of the blasphemous teachings of the Talmud. Okay, now before we hear from... Uh... Tex Mars here, the wonderful man that he is. Uh, I'm being sarcastic. He's not wonderful. He's a lying Satanist. But uh, before we hear from this guy, um, he just said about Martin Luther. You know, let, oh, let's just listen to Martin Luther here. You know, the Jews and their lies. His book on the Jews and their lies. But let's watch what Stephen Anderson said uh, a couple of years back here, July 9th of 2008. Let's see what old Andersnake says about Martin Luther. He just got done reading his 95 Theses. It's called Martin Luther, Luther's 95 Theses Exposed as Heresy by Baptists. Let's listen to this. Now, does this sound like a... Boy, wow. Great hero of the faith. Great Baptist preacher. Wow. And yet, how many times have I heard him lift it up as a hero? He was a Christian. He was saved. And he was a little off on a few things. Yeah, I'll say. I'll say he's off on a few things. And yet I was taught that the 95 Thesis was wonderful. 
Okay. Now he plainly he's he's going through all these different guys, you know, from the past and everything else, and, and he plainly says that Martin Luther was not a saved man. He reads a bunch of the 95 Theses and stuff, and he says, you know, Martin Luther is a heretic. And Martin Luther was a heretic, by the way. Uh, again, you know, my wife was raised in the Lutheran cult system. It's just Catholicism light is all it is. It's just, it's Catholic by another name. Okay, Lutheranism is not salvation. Lutheranism is not Christianity. All right, so Anderson's right when he says that Martin Luther was lost, but then he goes on and he quotes Martin Luther later on in his most recent little propaganda film here. So you can't rely on Martin Luther for his theology, his teachings on, on Scripture, but you can rely on him for his teachings against the Jews. Let's hear what uh, Tex Mars has to say here against uh, or about all this thing with Luther and everything. And, and watch the quote that they put up as well from Martin Luther's book. His very last sermon, he preached about the Jews. And he said, the Jews hate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And through their perfidious behavior, and he says that they, they create all kinds of stratagems and ruses to deceive us. And he got so angry at them, he actually said, we should go and burn all the copies of their Talmud. But he was inf infuriated about the Talmud. Okay. Tex Mars just said, oh, we should go and burn the copies of their Talmud. That's not what I'm reading from the quote that they put, put right there. Look at that. Their synagogues should be set on fire, and whatever does not burn up should be covered or spread over with dirt. Their homes should likewise be broken down and destroyed. They should be deprived of their prayer books and Talmuds in which such idolatry, lies, cursing, and blasphemy are taught. Why would you put a quote up like that if you're not trying to incite hatred and violence towards the Jewish people? Of course, today, the Jews consider him a great anti-Semite. St. Augustine was no better. He was also anti-Semitic? That's mm. right. Okay. He was very demeaning. All this mm. is pure hatred. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're listening to John Chrysostom, St. Augustine, Peter the Venerable, Martin Luther, John Calvin. You name the church father. You name the Protestant leader throughout history. They're all saying the same thing about the Jews, that they're the synagogue of Satan, that it's a false religion. This doctrine that the Jews are still God's chosen people is a new doctrine. So did you see who he just uh, referenced there as a uh, great church fathers and everything else? And he's, he's, you know, called them. He said Christians down through the centuries earlier on. He said Christians down through the centuries have always been against the Jews. So he is including all those men, St. Augustine hello, Catholic, you know, and I mean, all these different people, and he includes John Calvin. Let's watch what he says about John Calvin in one of his little silly sermons here. Sick of this, Cal you know what this Calvinism is? A bunch of people sitting on their fat rear end, not wanting to go do anything for God. That's all Calvinism is. That's all it's ever been. Amen. Well, I knew this one Calvinist preacher. He worked really hard. Yeah, he worked really hard to damn everybody to hell because he's working for Satan. And everybody flocked to come here because they're all lazy and want to sit on their rear end and let everybody go to hell. That's what Calvinism is. Hmm. It doesn't sound like Andrew Snake is too big of a fan of Calvinism, unless, of course, Calvin is uh, attacking the Jews. Then he's a Christian theologian. He's a Protestant, a Christian down through the centuries that we can rely on. You see the hypocrisy here. And by the way, all of the men there, those church fathers, they were all for government churches, just like Anderson is today, just with his little 501c3 corporation, an agent of the federal government, right? You can see my video on that. Proven. It's a fact. And the Anders Snake zombies, oh, oh they, they go into little fits and everything else. He's not an agent of the federal government. He's not an agent. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 501c3 is an abomination. Right? You are putting yourself under the authority of the government. Just like all these Protestants that he quotes. One minute they're a heretic with their preaching of the gospel. The next when they attack the Jews, they're wonderful. They're Christians in our past and everything. You see? And what is the key idea there between, behind this thing of church-state setup? State churches are all building earthly kingdoms. What does the Bible say in Matthew chapter 11? Matthew chapter 11, verse 21, I believe it is. Excuse me, verse 12. I had the numbers right. They were just 
switched. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. That's what Anderson is trying to do here. That's what he's doing. He is trying to march to Zion with his Catholic masters to take it by force. Why is there going to be a rebuilt temple there which the Antichrist is going to rule and reign from? If the Jews are no more and it's just about the Christian church and whatever else, why? And again, why do my, Moses and Elijah show up? Why the signs and wonders for seven years? Because God's not done with the nation of Israel. They are his people. They are in sin right now. They've rejected Jesus Christ. That's why there's going to be a seven-year time of Jacob's trouble. And this whole movie, this little propaganda film that he put out, is the same exact tactic that was used by the Nazis. You go and you get a bunch of Jews, you go and you record them saying nasty things about Jesus Christ to turn people against the Jews and so that they can slaughter them without any feelings at all without any feelings of remorse, without any fear of God, without any understanding of Scripture that God is not done with the nation of Israel. That's what marching to Zion is. Okay, it should also be noted here, this is a book by Tex Mars. It's in my throwaway pile, but I just need to make a comment here. This book is about the hand signals and everything that uh, a lot of the Satanists do out there. And I want to show you this one page here. Here he's got this whole page on Martin Luther. Martin Luther doing this Masonic thing here, the symbol, and there's Martin Luther's symbol. And here he gets into talking about how Martin Luther uh, was a Rosicrucian. A New Ager, basically, is what the Rosicrucians were. So, kind of interesting that uh, Tex Mars condemns Martin Luther, and yet he'll sell Martin Luther's book. I'll show you the picture here. On his website, he sells his book and wrote the foreword to the book, the reprint of the book that he sells there. So, here on page, uh, where's the page number? Page 322, interesting there. Um, page 322, Tex Mars condemns Martin Luther as a Rosicrucian New Ager in his book, Codex Magica, and yet he sells Martin Luther's book and promotes Martin Luther's attacks on the Jews.